Has the Eiffel Tower been sold twice? Victor Lustig was a master of deception and a genuine con man who succeeded in defrauding numerous people of their money by selling the Eiffel Tower twice. He was an expert manipulator who could see the frailties and wants of his victims and take advantage of them. Victor Lustig was a well-known con artist who deceived wealthy people for a long time, even selling the Eiffel Tower twice before being discovered and receiving a prison sentence. Victor was driven to deceive people who were wealthier than him by the sharp contrast between his battle for survival and the lavish lifestyle of the couple he saw. Victor's techniques for con artistry on opulent cruise liners demonstrate how effortlessly he could fool affluent patrons and amass vast cash. Victor's ability to persuade people to believe in the magic money machine is an intriguing example of the power of manipulation and persuasion. Victor was able to drop his target's guard and steer the conversation in the direction of his magic money box by using his tactic of winning their trust by first providing assistance, such as recovering a stolen wallet. The con also depended on fabricating a plausible narrative. Victor would put a dollar one hundred bill into the machine and say that the cloning process would take six hours, during which they might play cards, have dinner, or converse. Victor was able to fool the scrap traders into thinking they had first dibs on the salvage rights of the Eiffel Tower, thanks to his careful preparation and cunning. On January 4, 1890, Lustig was born in Hostin, Austria-Hungary. It was evident from a young age that Lustig was extraordinarily intelligent but also extraordinarily prone to getting himself into trouble. By the time Lustig was 19 years old, he was a student in Paris. He was gambling and wooing the French girls in the area while he wasn't studying. A jealous boyfriend gave him a scar on the left side of his face for this latter pastime. Lustig soon abandoned his studies to pursue a life of crime. He created a number of schemes and cons using his advanced degree in multilingualism, which soon started bringing in a little fortune for him. He had quickly turned into a skilled scam artist. The majority of his initial con games took place on cruise ships traveling from France to New York. He would approach wealthy tourists by pretending to be a music producer looking for funding for a fictitious Broadway show. It was the ideal con. By the time his captive audience of Marx realized they had been duped, the cruise was over and Lustig had vanished. Lustig went on to other frauds when these maritime lines were stopped during World War I. After relocating to the U.S., he started going after more important targets, such as banks. He swiftly gained notoriety among American law enforcement as a result of this. Lustig made the decision to return to France in 1925 as the pressure on him to stay in America was growing. He soon found the source of inspiration for his next con. He discovered through a newspaper story that the Eiffel Tower, France's newest landmark, was the subject of growing debate. At this point, the iconic tower was getting on in years and was in need of restoration, and Paris's government was having trouble covering the expense of upkeep. There was a cursory remark in the article on the growing public sentiment to remove the landmark entirely. This is what truly made Lustig stop and consider. He promptly employed a forger to create fictitious official stationery for him. He then arranged a secret meeting at one of the priciest hotels in Paris for a small group of scrap metal dealers. He informed them of the issues pertaining to the Eiffel Tower and identified himself as the Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Posts and Telegraphs. He told the men that he was in charge of arranging the sale of the tower on behalf of the government. The only issue was that the agreement had to be done in secret until it was finished because of the possibility of public sentiment shifting. He explained to the men that he had picked them because they were known to be reliable, sincere businessmen who could maintain such secrecy. Lustig watched to see which of the dealers would make the perfect mark as he conversed with them. He ultimately chose André Poisson. Poisson was an insecure man who was only interested in elevating his status in the Parisian business sector and establishing a name for himself. Knowing such a man, Lustig could not help but want to acquire such a well-known monument. Lustig turned his attention to Poisson when the traders had delivered him their bids. He set up a private meeting and disclosed that he had implied he was an official with corrupt practices. He told Poisson that he was dissatisfied with his government income and that Poisson needed more incentive if he desired the Eiffel Tower. Desperate to establish himself, Poisson went for it head-on. Along with giving Lustig a sizable bribe, he also promised to pay 70,000 francs for the skyscraper. Lustig successfully persuaded the impoverished man to give him two payments for an item he didn't even possess. Lustig ran away to Austria as soon as he received the funds. 
There he stayed quiet for several months while keeping a watch on the paperwork. Lustig had a suspicion that a man such as Poisson would be too embarrassed to inform the police that he had been duped. He was accurate. It did not take long to see that Lustig had pulled off his largest scam to date. Soon after, he went back to Paris to attempt the same con once more. This was not his fortunate day. He was able to locate another mark who was prepared to purchase the tower. Unfortunately for Lustig though, one of his other marks had grown wary and called the police to denounce his con. Lustig had to escape to the United States in order to avoid being arrested. Even Lustig's run-in with the authorities did not stop him from continuing his illegal activities. He carried on with his criminal life after arriving back in America. It wasn't just about the money for Lustig, it was all about taking on the task and demonstrating his superior intelligence. This prompted him to pull off his riskiest scam to date. Al Capone, who was 26 at the time, was duped by Lustig in 1925 and the infamous mobster was unaware that he had been duped. Capone was scheduled to meet with Lustig in his suite at the Hawthorne Hotel in Cicero, which is close to Chicago. By guaranteeing to quadruple Capone's $50,000 investment in 60 days or less, he persuaded the mob boss to participate in a get-rich-quick plan. Although the specifics of the ruse are unknown, Capone found it sufficient to give over $50,000 in cash. But Lustig was either unable to keep his word or change his mind about taking the money and leaving. In any case, a few weeks later he went back to Capone and acknowledged his failure. Lustig was awash with cash, but when the mobster inquired whether he was broke he replied in the affirmative and Capone gave him $5,000. Lustig's next major con, a massive counterfeiting enterprise, started in 1930. Following its huge success, Lustig pumped thousands of fictitious banknotes into the U.S. economy each month over the next five years. It was, if anything, overly successful, drawing federal authorities' attention to him. Lustig was detained in New York on May 10, 1935 and accused of managing a counterfeiting enterprise. Billy May, his mistress, had turned him in when she discovered he was having an affair. He'd told too many lies already. Lustig was ultimately given a 20-year sentence to serve at the notorious Alcatraz Island Jail, 15 years for fraud and an additional 5 years for trying to evade punishment. On March 11, 1947, he passed away from pneumonia. Ironically, his death certificate listed him as an apprentice salesman. Master of deceit and genuine conman Victor Lustig was able to trick numerous people out of their money and sell the Eiffel Tower twice. He was an expert manipulator who could see the frailties and wants of his victims and take advantage of them. Even though Lustig committed illegal acts, it is impossible to deny that he had a certain allure and boldness that one cannot help but be impressed by. The narrative of Lustig serves as a warning about the perils of unbridled ambition and the attraction of quick cash. His legacy endures as a warning to always be on the lookout for people who seem too attractive and self-assured to be trusted, as well as to be cautious and skeptical when presented with possibilities that seem too good to be true. The tower is currently owned by the city of Paris, which also owns 99% of the development business that is in charge of managing it. In addition to being an engineer, Bertrand Lemoyne is a historian. That's all for today. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. Also, express your thoughts in the comment section below. Until the next video, bye.